Hey, welcome to Frisky Biscuits. I'm Dr. G with my partner right here. Lisa. And we're here with another program to entertain you, irritate you, and most of all, just to have some fun. So welcome to Frisky Biscuit. And this week, we've got some interesting, funny stuff for you, some strange stuff all about camping. Camping, right? Yeah, and truckers. We're going to actually... <laughs> Uh, dedicate this program to all the truckers out there and anybody that has a truck. You know, one out of 18% of the U.S. population has a truck. One out of 18%. That's 20%. That's 18% oh of the population has a truck. Is yeah. that what you're saying? One out of five people. <laughs> That's amazing. Where we live, I think everybody has one. I know. In fact, you're not cool unless you do. So. You know, I used to have a truck and... It was a big truck. I probably would have been better off with a small truck, like a Toyota. I had a Toyota Tundra, and it was so big, I kept putting little dents in it, and I finally sold it at 7000 That, that By the way, that does not surprise me, oh, the little no. dent thing, you know. It was backing up, that big monster. I just wasn't <laughs> used to backing up a truck, and it even had the backup beeper on it. However, <laughs> it was in a place where... You know, those little poles that are in some of the parking lots, it was underneath that. And Your so I Suburban would. Suburban has one of those ba backup beepers on it. Did I you know. know. That? <laughs> I think they're better these days. I think I had a problem with that. I definitely had a problem with that truck. It was so big. I sold it at 7,000 miles, and the guy was so freaking happy that he got this brand new truck. I had fixed it all up, I got all the dents out of it. And you obviously didn't tell him about the previous history of the truck. Yeah, I did. But they were just like <laughs> cosmetic, nothing, exactly. just little bumps, exactly. you know? Exactly, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, needless to say, I am one of the 80% that do not have the truck anymore. <laughs> The bigger, the better for her. <laughs> Watch out when you see it coming down the road, really. All right, so what are we doing today? What do we got going on? Man, it's kind of rainy where we are. Kinda, I know. What's wrong with this weather? You know? It's like up and down. One day it's sunny. The next day it's like schizophrenic. Does anybody ever ask any questions about chemtrails? Yeah. Yeah. Let's we'll start there asking was a questions. There's great website that I found on chemtrails, and I put it on Facebook, and they said it's disinformation. <laughs> so I know for sure it that it was real. <laughs> <laughs> of course it's disinformation. Anything the media says, I say the opposite is true. <laughs> Man, it's sad, I tell you. It's, it's strange, though. Every, every weekend, we want to keep people out of sunshine, out of happiness, I think. So we're here to make you happy. We're here to put a smile on your face today. And we have all kinds of cool stuff. We don't have an interview again today because Lisa has fallen short of being able to find someone to Actually, interview. Actually, we have lots of interviews coming <laughs> up, so they're all stacked and ready to oh, go. Okay. <laughs> and he's just giving you a hard time today because she I is know, full of is herself that? today. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He loves giving me a hard time. <laughs> so what do we got going? What do you have? Truckers. Let's talk well, about Well, let's talk about truckers, truckers because, you well, know, they. the more I read into this and we do research on this and you find these snippets of stuff, these truckers, man, I tell you what, if it wasn't for them, we'd be in deep caca. Yes, yes. This is a shout out to all of them today. Anybody that owns a truck, but especially the over-the-road truckers. They, you know, they're on the road an average of 240 days a year. I mean, this just incredible. So they're very rarely home. Very rarely home. Yeah. I mean, they're missing their kids' birthdays, their kids coming out of the womb. You know, they're missing a lot of life to be out there for us to bring us the goods and services. And the first thing we're going to talk about is what they listen to. You know, what do truckers actually listen to on the road? What do you think the number one thing that they would listen to? Us. Probably us. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's not, actually. It's the radio. They actually pay for the SXM satellite radio, most of them. And two of the top stations are Road Dog Trucking and Willie's Roadhouse. So if you're a trucker out there, <laughs> I bet you that That's you have name. listened to those. Willie's Roadhouse. Willie. Hey, Willie. <laughs> And they, they choose it for their music, for their talk radio, when they're driving, because they're driving all those hours. So You know, in Sirius SM, XM, satellite radio, that's that kind of makes sense because, uh, you know, they're moving around. So with regular radio stations, they're kind of regionalized, and you got to tune them in and stuff, and you got have to 
keep tuning them as you move across the country with a, with a satellite radio. You can have one station on all the time. It's going to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. So and they're probably really interesting if, if all the truckers are listening to them. Yeah, yeah. And if they'll discover podcasting and Frisky Biscuit, we'll be with them all the time, too. Well, you know what? That's the second one. The second one is podcast. And because they're recorded, they can put them on. And the very first one of the podcast is Red Eye Radio, and it has all the news, opinions. It's the politics and, in the trucking industry. So I bet you – I haven't listened to that one. I'm going to check it out, Red Eye Radio. And then the second one, I don't know of this one, this O-O-I-D-A. Is it OODA? And it's a landline <laughs> now. And it's, it talks it's another about one of those acronyms, probably, those initials that you were talking about last week or a couple of weeks ago. You know, ooh, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ada. ooh, no, walla, walla, uh, bing, bang. Yeah. This is about like the trucker owners, like the lifestyle radio for um, giving issues and lifestyle challenges for the owners and just regular information. The third one is called Trucker Dump, and it's all the opinions and how to approve in your trucker. And this is, I you know, I'd love to hear from you guys of what you listen to. This is all statistics that I find online. And the fourth one was really interesting. The fourth one for the podcast was the Frisky Biscuit podcast. <laughs> now, did you? That's what did you? Wait a minute. To. You know, we're we're so new. Did you plant that in there? <laughs> Me? Why? Me? Why please, would I do something like that? Please listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could because the third one. Okay, first is radio and satellite radio. The second is podcast, and the third one actually is streaming music apps which is like Apple Radio, Google Radio, uh, Google Play Store, the iPhone Play Store. So you can find Frisky Biscuit there, too. So right. we're in two out of the three of the genres. There we are. But so we're available for We're there for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> With totally up-to-the-minute accurate information about trucking, camping, motorhoming, food trucking, and delivery trucking. Yeah, and when you're sitting there and you have all this time off, um, give us a shout out on YouTube. So it's Frisky Biscuit Podcast. You can actually see us live of who we are. And you can find us on our website too. That is a scary thought, seeing us live. Yeah. Is this live right now? This is live right now. <laughs> Although it's recorded, we put a little extra into it too. We're getting and ready to we go live. we have a great website. It's frisky-biscuit.com. And it has our YouTube link. It has our all our, not all of them, but about five or six of the podcast links on there. Uh, you can always donate to us, buy us a cup of coffee, see some funny pictures of us. We also have our T-shirt gear and hats on there, too. So we have to give ourselves a shout-out. And we have a new T-shirt that's coming up, and Gary happens to be wearing it. Dr. G oh, is in yeah, his yeah. stuff today. You can't really see it on here, but... Uh, we'll switch the camera so they can see it. Well, I... <laughs> It's on me. I don't have Voodoo. one on today. Voodoo. But it's a new Idaho shirt. It's Idaho bow hunter. And because I'm an archer, we made an Idaho shirt. And I know all of you guys aren't from Idaho, but a lot of you truckers may like it. So <laughs> Idaho bow hunters. I'm looking so at myself on the monitor. The model I am not. <laughs> <laughs> it is a cool shirt, though. People see this and they like it. And it's totally fitting for where we live. Yeah, so we're going to get that out and put it on our website soon. Yeah, Frisky and I think you have some other T-shirt ideas coming up here in a few minutes that you're going to share with people, unless you yeah. want to go into that Want to jump into that right <laughs> now? Okay, I want to hear some <laughs> feedback from you guys, of if you like these or not. We haven't decided. We found them all online, so they're out there. However, I thought they were pretty good ideas for T-shirts. The first one... Yeah, just a little disclaimer. Remember when we started doing this podcast, said we have a touch of cynicism in here, so just remember that. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Go so ahead, Mindstro. The first one's probably for you. It says, I don't like morning people, or mornings, or people. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that one's for me? <laughs> it's probably more for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. This one's for you, though. I'm a doctor. To save time, let's assume I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree with that. That's not even funny. That's totally appropriate. That's <laughs> totally appropriate. Actually, he is most of the time right. He's a cool guy. We have a cool doctor. We're one of the lucky <laughs> ones. Although there's a lot of cool doctors out there that are they. I have found the older doctors and some of the really young doctors that just came out that really their heart is in 
being a doctor. So. Yeah, they haven't hardened themselves yet. No, or they're not just doing it for the money. <laughs> okay, let's go on then. My, This is the third one. Okay. My opinion offended you. You ought to hear what I keep to myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally appropriate That's for doctors. for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's getting offended these days. So oh, that's a good one. People love to be offended, don't they? They just, in anything, just offend, it offends me. And, of course, that is not the thing to tell me because if I know it offends you, I just keep drilling it. <laughs> I just, on, on, you on. Know, my job in life is to harden people up, make them tough. Oh, well, you've done Makes, it for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tough. <laughs> tough old you broad, are, you know. You are. That is true. All right. The next one. You can't scare me. I have two daughters. <laughs> <laughs> and That's for my sister. We'll give that having, one to her. Having She's one daughter. Daughters. One daughter's enough for me. <laughs> that one about did me in. <laughs> Aww, she's great. I love Kelly. <laughs> no offense, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And this one, this is my favorite one of them all. It's the last one. When the virus is over, I still want some of you to stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> And that and is true. That could be a very I true statement. I see a few of you, of and I'm like, ah, it's okay. <laughs> you can stay away now. So those are new T-shirt designs. Are we really seriously thinking about doing those? No, they're already done. They're already <laughs> out there. I just found them. I thought they were hilarious. Huh. But huh. if you have any new T-shirt designs that you want us to design and put on the website, let us know. And check it out, frisky-biscuit.com, on our website, and let us know what you think. If you want any new ones, let us know. We're going to put this Idaho one on, and we have some really cool ones. We have a, a great one for truckers. What so is it? Well, you'll have to go to the website and see. <laughs> what is the website? <laughs> How do they find those? Frisky-biscuit.com. Just put a dash between Frisky Biscuit. Yeah, a Let's lot of see. people are not finding us because of that dash, you know. Yeah, and if you find us on YouTube... I always put the link there to some of the podcast sites and also to our website. So you'll you'll find us. If you want to find us, you'll find us. You know, we uh, we had a harebrain idea the other day. We went to go see the Maverick movie. And um, just so you know what we said last time, we are going to be here for the long haul, and we are not going away. We have decided that I think we're going to uh, be advertising at the movies. Yes. 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 We're so, starting with Twin Falls. Yes. So if you ever come through Twin Falls and go to a movie, you'll <laughs> see us on the big screen TV. <laughs> Just make sure that Dr. Tim next door has our dental work done. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> the popcorn. <laughs> and then we'll expand. You can actually expand to all of them. It's quite pricey. We can't afford that yet. Uh, however, we will be in Twin Falls and starting that, and then we'll branch out after that. Yeah. We should do it for fun. Well. You know, we want many people watching – and listen to our podcast as possible. We want uh, to expand this. And uh, and probably the idea here is to make it as much value to you as we possibly can, especially if you're a motorhome or a motorhome junkie, as we call it, or a food trucker or anybody who is commercially operating out there on the road making a living. We realize a lot of you people have got oh, overlooked. It's just like the Vietnam veterans. They just kind of got overlooked. Yes. And these people yes. are the unsung heroes of America right now. Mm -hmm. But like this morning, we noticed at 8 o'clock this morning, and this, we're, we're taping this on a Sunday morning, we had a UPS, no, it was a FedEx guy eight delivering at 8 o'clock this morning. On a Sunday. So he's I away mean, from his family, he's out there doing his job, and FedEx is a big company and they do a great job. But these people are out there 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, doing a great job for all of us, and uh, I think it goes unappreciated. I think we are so spoiled in this country that mm -hmm. people just take all of this for granted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And so we've decided to make this podcast focusing on road warriors. That's what we call road warriors, people that are out there on the road making a living, gone from home, even on a Sunday, even on a Christmas or a, or a New Year's Day, to make sure your life is better. So that's what this is about, even though we play games here and have fun and make fun of people and all that kind of stuff. Our heart is really to honor these people and especially the truck drivers because they are going through hell right now this fuel thing is absolutely out of control you know it's changing daily and sometimes twice a day i mean we went and gassed up the car the other day and two days later it's 30 cents more and it's just if you don't have some of those apps i would highly suggest putting an app on your phone and finding the least expensive gas station near you because 
uh, they're changing. I mean, some of them are 20, 30 cents different, and you can save a little bit by the app. It's not much. Last time I saved a dollar. However, a dollar here, a dollar there. It's and like after a penny a year, saved, it does a penny earned. Up. Yeah. We've been doing that with uh, motorhoming uh, since we have owned it, and it does make a difference in fuel prices. There's a couple of apps out there uh, that can make a huge difference if you use diesel. And, well, the uh, one we use is called Gas Buddy, and you don't save as much as some of the other apps, but it shows all the diesel prices. It shows all the regular prices, whether it's – I usually go to the lowest common denominator and go up from there. But every once in a while, you'll get an $0.08 cent savings on a gas station, and you go and find that gas station near you, and it happens to be the least expensive. And we have a lot of gas stations near us, so it's like let's find the one – that is within a mile radius that is the least expensive. Right. And right now, it makes a big difference because they're changing so quickly. It makes a huge difference. And uh, we feel for everybody out there, especially some of you uh, young single moms that are working, and uh, you got to deal with a babysitter, you got to deal with driving and buying the gas and the food, and you're kind of by yourself. Uh, wow. You know, it is kind of ugly out there for some of you. Many people are not feeling it yet because they – or affluent enough, or have money in the bank, but uh, not to get serious on everybody, and not to make it a downer, the thing we all have to do is pull together right now, and understand this is America, and America is good, and uh, we are good, and, uh, and we have it so good, I mean, traveling to other countries, you see, they just do not have any food, they don't have any luxuries, yet they're happy, so it's like, Find your happiness, and that's why we're here. We're doing our best to put a little bit of spark in your life. A little bit of sunshine. Yeah. So let's get back <laughs> to truckers. Let's talk about them. All right. What do you got? You know, trucks freight most of our freight out there. I mean, they're the most of our freight is transported by the truckers. In fact, um, what did I find? 91% of the lumber and the wood comes through the trucking industry. 83% of the farming and agricultural produce, 92% of prepared dairy foods and canned items, and 65% of pharmaceutical essentials are coming from the trucking industry. So a lot of our freight, that's why we love you guys and we want to really give you a special mention because if it weren't for you, we wouldn't have all those products that we use on a daily basis and we know that you work hard and I also, I want to give a shout out to the women, uh, you know, 6%, and I think it's even higher now, 8% are women truck drivers. And I'm starting to see more and more out there. It's a great job. You get paid really well. They say over the next 10 years, the field is increasing and it will continue to increase about 10% over the next 10 years. So it's a good field to be in. You get paid well, even though you're away from home a lot, if you can handle that or a lot of couples out there are doing it now. And you can bring your animal. You know, 40% of households have dogs or animals, I should say, but mostly dogs. 65% of all the truckers have a companion animal with them. I wouldn't yeah, suggest a I'm skunk. I'm impressed maybe a with dog. your statistics and your, you got all this on top of your head. Yeah. <laughs> well, I read them. You, uh, As the camera goes to you, got you too, I read them. You've got a ton of statistics <laughs> here. And let me, let me tell you, everybody, she does research this, and these numbers are real. We went through some of this stuff yesterday, and I couldn't believe some of the numbers, and, and especially uh, the truck drivers and how many of them there are and what they're going through right now. So <laughs> this is real stuff. And uh, by the way, we want to make this truthful and honest. We strive to make this a very honest broadcast well, we're honest but we can be funny and sarcastic too well that's what <laughs> we live on honest honesty and sarcasm <laughs> well and truckers drive a lot you know truckers drive the small businesses three million miles in their lifetime that's pretty amazing three million miles stop and think about it and 90 percent of the trucking industry is small businesses so i know this fuel situation is really digging into their non <laughs> their profit center but i know truckers do they're going to get around it oh yeah they'll we're figure gonna get out a way we're going to get around it they're going to get the stuff to you and that's very cool here where we are we're right at right at a big crossroads here in the country and uh they're just all over the place and they just keep running and running and running so god bless their hearts mm -hmm. you bet 
You gonna sing us a trucker song? No. I don't even. Do you know? No, I'll leave that songs? to Willie Nelson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're the you're the one that likes to sing. You sing a trucker song. I do. Song. But it's not. <laughs> you know, when I was young, my mom, my grandmother, and my sister are singers. In fact, my sister was a professional singer for a while. My grandma was the one that could crack the glass. You know, she was just <laughs> a really great singer. And my dad and I just did not inherit that. Well, I didn't that is inherit true. it. And so one day we were, when we were young, we used to go to church a lot. And my mom and sister were in the choir. And the choir started singing. And they decided to invite some of the audience to come up and sing with them. And my dad and I stood up to walk up. And my mom and my sister were like, no, 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 do not come up here. So even though I like to sing, it doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> I can my tune. I can concur with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, though. There is something about singing that you can't <laughs> do it with your face looking down. You know, it has to be up. <laughs> even, even those sad songs in the country music, it seems like you have to be happy to sing. Oh, country songs are, man. Lose your you dog, you lose you listen, your truck. You listen to country songs and believe that's what life really is, you're... You know, you're not going to make it, <laughs> but it makes for good music. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Else? So I won't sing. We'll go back to yeah. trucking here. We keep getting distracted. I don't know what's going on here. More coffee. No, no. I have enough coffee. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, in the U.S. alone, 8.9 million people have jobs in the trucking industry, and 3.5 million of these are actually truck drivers. So three and a half million what is that, 10% of the yeah. population yeah. are in the trucking industry? Yeah. And 29% of the states, that's one of their top industries in their states, is the trucking industry. I know it is where we live. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most of the trucks are come out of Texas, Florida, and California, or they're registered there, so they have to go back to that state. So that's why we see a lot of California trucks up here. Not so much Texas. We'll see Texas cars, not so much in the trucks. I'm sure the southern Arizona and New Mexico and those states yeah. see the, the trucks out of there. So it makes sense. You know, Florida, Texas, and California. Yeah. Not so much in New England. I suppose the tax structure is probably a little higher. I don't know. I'm not a trucker. <laughs> you could be. <laughs> I could be. I always <laughs> wanted to be. I thought that'd be cool. You know, of course, I like shiny objects, and they're big, shiny objects. And you like machines. He's I do. a machine guy. I mean, look I'm what he did to this podcast, put it all together. I've ruined it. I've ruined this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Not <I>? yet. <laughs> all right, well, let's go on. 70% of all the goods in America are by trucks. 70%? That's a, that's a lot. You know, a lot of people argue also that trucks aren't bringing everything to us. It's trains and boats. But stop and think about it. It comes on the trains and boats, and then it goes to a distribution point, and uh, then it goes out in the trucks and comes right to our doorstep. So trucks are the big deal, and we got to take care of these people. So when you have the opportunity to vote, vote in favor of commerce and you know lower gas prices and better energy policies and all these kind of things. I keep going political. I know. What's yeah, that about? I'm just a political guy. It's it's easy to go political these days. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> so these trucks are pretty hardy too. You know, our cars, the good ones, can go up to two hundred thousand miles on the vehicle. Guess how much the trucks can go? Their diesel engines are incredible. A million miles. Yeah, the big diesels are good for about a million miles. Five times. Yeah, yeah. So that means five cars. You'll have five cars versus one truck. Yeah. And we see a lot of motorhomes now are um, towables being pulled by the the truck engines now. Yeah, the big. S a lot of people have, have gone to uh, semi trucks to pull their fifth wheels, and mm -hmm. they, they it's actually safer. A couple of guys on YouTube talk about that, and they say, well, it's kind of overkill. But they say it's really not. Uh, they're designed for that, and they're balanced better than some of the pickups. Really the only pickup, I think we were doing some research, we'll talk about that here in a minute, that's really suitable for fifth-wheel pulling is some of the big, big, heavy, heavy 3,500 3, pickups, mm -hmm. you know, for the big, heavy fifth wheels, because they are almost the size of a semi. You see them going down well, the, the road. Well, the semis are probably really comfortable. Yeah. You know, 18 yeah. speeds, just zipping down the yeah. road. and they got a bed. <laughs> and some of them even have a toilet. They have a kitchen. 
I mean, the new ones that just have everything. They're like little tiny mini motorhomes. And that's very well, cool. Well, they are. They got their sleeper back there, you know. Yeah. Hey, b- speaking of that, let's talk about Road Warriors and what this sticker thing is all about. Because okay. I noticed you passing out stickers even to a waitress yesterday. Yes, yes. Yeah, what this is that? This is our Frisky Biscuit podcast Road Warrior sticker. And they're static, so they don't just stick to everything. They're just like static electricity. So you can put them on your motorhome, your vehicles, your... Well, cars, trucks, anything you want to. You, I even put it on my bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do is we go out and we find you guys and we interview you or we talk to you and we give you these stickers just for fun. And people like it. Yeah, because they, they're, they're they have a little, yeah. you know, our cup here. Well, that's kind of our signature. So we're sitting in the cup and, and everybody comments on it. When you wear one of the Frisky Biscuit hats, people will stop you and say, what is that? And by the way, we do have that merchandise available, and it is for sale, and we want to sell it to you. So go <laughs> to our, our uh, little website there and check it out. We've got some cool T-shirts. And uh, even if you don't want a picture of us sitting in a cup, we have some – got one there that I just love. In fact, I wore it on one of our podcasts. It's called Dream Home, and it's got a picture of a motorhome in there. But a lot of people that are RVing, that's how they feel. This is their dream home. They've spent – waited their entire life to be able to get one of these things. And that's more of a dream home than their own home. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. There's, we have a cool T-shirt that kind of expresses that. And I know some, it's our dream home. Yeah, we love it, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And if you haven't done it and you're thinking about it, go rent one of these things. Uh, you can go rent them. Not cheap, not expensive, well worth it. Take the family out for a, a week or so, and uh, you will be hooked. It's a lot of fun. And watch the Robin Williams movie before <laughs> you go, and make sure you, you are not doing the same mistakes and, that and he do does. not do anything he does. <laughs> That's right. Just do the opposite, <laughs> kind of like the media now. Just do the opposite, the movie, and you'll RV be fine. Probably did more to kill the RV business than anything. <laughs> that is the God, quite essential. The quite essential newbie. It's a great movie. I'm not a movie goer where I'd watch a whole the same movie over and over and over. However, that one you could watch over and over you and over. Could. Anytime you want a good laugh and you're in an RV, that's the one to watch. He does things with that motorhome that I don't know how they even did it. I mean, it goes airborne. It's a it's a funny movie, especially if you like RVing and you're thinking about it. It's just fun to watch. It's a good family movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all those truckers that are out there, one of the statistics I found which was really interesting because they go and see a lot of the country – they do a lot of photography to capture the sites and the people and share online. They do a lot of sharing on Instagram and Facebook. However, there's a new thing that they do. I don't know how new it is to all of us, however, for that industry. And they do it a lot for the homeless, the disabled, you know, to kind of um, give away and give back. And that's, I love this, needle craft. So they do a lot of sewing. I do cross-stitch. And so they do a lot of sewing for little items that they can give to charities and give away. And I thought that was really interesting, and it makes sense because it doesn't take a lot of room. Yeah, and it's quite – I watch you do it. It's quite engaging. Yes, yes. It's a great way to just zone out or to do your thinking. We'll have to bring your moose in here that you're doing right now and show everybody. How One of these times, yeah. I will. Maybe when I get done, because it's it only is halfway really done beautiful. right now. really beautiful. Beautiful piece of work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really fun. The so Winnie dog that she did is actually my favorite, but the, the moose is going to be very dramatic. Yes. <laughs> and it takes a long time. It takes months to do one of these. So good for you guys that are out there doing your needle craft out on the road. <laughs> and you remember, there is one holiday coming Real up. men, real men do needle craft. That's right. Maybe yes. that's a new And wear t-shirt. pink. Yep. So there's a new holiday, or not a new, it's a holiday coming up for all the truckers. And that's even those of you that drive trucks just for fun. If that one out of five people use their truck for work, the rest of 80% just have a truck for transportation, not for work. So that's a pretty cool statistic. However, there's a great holiday coming up. It's July 20th. So mark your calendar, July 20th. Every year, it's National Ugly Truck Day. So if you have an ugly truck, <laughs> this is your holiday. I haven't seen a lot of ugly trucks anymore, man. I tell you, they're all gorgeous. <laughs> I love the old trucks. I, one day I want to yeah, get Yeah, the old, old conventional. It's been redone. You know, it has a good engine in it. The old conventional Kenworths and Peterbilts. Man, the big square grill looks like a giant Rolls Royce. Yeah, I'm I talking more those. like the little Chevrolets, like the little pickup trucks. Oh, you're talking trucks. little classic pickups. Yeah. 
Well, that's yeah. we're gonna get you one of those for Christmas. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that'd be so <laughs> cool. I put my paddleboard in the back. Not, <laughs> not a dog though. <laughs> All right, what else do we have? We have. Um, You're lagging. Okay, this is a good one. No, I'm not. I'm thinking. You're lagging. So truckers pay about thirty six percent of the taxes and fees associated to our highway trust fund. However, they only comprise 7% of the overall traffic. So they're paying, so a they're third, paying a huge more load. than a third of all our fees. A huge load. Wow. For our, our, our roadways. So, you know, when you see them, tap your hat to those Boy, truckers. another thing. If you uh, think you got potholes now, take the truckers off the road, and you're really going to have potholes. I mean, yeah. that's, they're paying for getting those things fixed and paving the roads. Yep. Yep, and they're yep. only using them 7% of the time. Yep, yeah. but they're bringing all our goods and services yeah, to us. Yeah, that's very interesting. And they're really clean. You know, they the diesels back in 1988, if you took one diesel truck, 60 modern-day trucks are equivalent to the same emissions so the emissions controls that they've done over the years for these trucks, they're running really clean diesel in them. So all this blarky you hear about the you know, our trucks are causing problems, they're not. They're really clean running, even cleaner than our cars. So that the diesel fuel with the def, you know, clean, clean, clean. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna get political, so keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How many active trucks are on the road? 15.5 million trucks are on the road. That's huge. That's a lot of trucks. I wonder how many cars. I didn't look up that. Yeah, but it's probably more than trucks. But think about that. How many? 15.5 million yep. trucks out there delivering every day. Man, these guys, again, they're keeping our economy going. And they're zipping around from point to point. I just, it'd be fun to have a graph of just like a live graph. Like, where's Waldo? Where's these trucks going? <laughs> I know there is a, a magic to it all. You got an infatuation about Waldo, don't you? I love Waldo. You're always bringing that up. Where's Waldo? I love Waldo. <laughs> it's, you know, I lived in this town one time where they did this thing for the kids where you would go into all the stores and it was a walking town that you could just walk around the downtown. And every store had Waldo hidden, and the t kids had to go in. And I thought, what a great marketing, you know, because all the kids would want to go to all these stores to find Waldo, and the stores would change him around, and it was just a little, like, little tiny Waldo, and they'd hide it in the stores, so the kids <laughs> would come in and beg their parents to go to all these stores. So that year, the stores did really well, because all the kids brought their parents. That's very cool. That's nice. I mean, you, you have a couple... Outfits that look kind of like Waldo. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a female Waldo out there. <laughs> all right. If you could line up all the trucks in the U.S., they would line up to go to the moon. The moon and back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very cool. Very cool. Who okay. figured that out? I mean, <laughs> to top and think about that. Somebody how do you, did. How do you come up with that? And you had another one there that was kind of funny. I don't know. It was the length of a truck or something. Oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> Ruining her plan. I know. Well, see, I'm reading it, right? I'm just not off the top of my head, although some of them are off the top of my head. Okay, um, stopping. Okay, this is a good one for all of us on the road to know because these trucks can't stop on a dime. I mean, cars can't either, but trucks need 40% more stopping compared to a car. That means three football fields of worth of pavement in order to have enough room as they're going up to speed in order to stop. So those of you in those little cars that are weaving in and out, you're just waiting for an accident to happen. So if they're going like, what, 60 miles an hour, it takes them three football fields to stop? Yep. Because yep. that's the average is 65 to And these knotheads are swinging in and out of there just right on their bumper right in front and hit the brakes. Boy, they're just asking for it. I know. And those <laughs> ones I see on the back of the trucks that are trying to – collect the wind to me that's crazy if a truck had to oh, stop the, really the quick drafting man you'd be the <laughs> goner that's you'd not a good goner either. you can't even see him back there i know yeah i know all right so here's some questions about trucks let's keep it rolling here how much does a truck and trailer weigh i mean that's i had never thought about that i mean you know they're heavy they weigh eighty thousand pounds eighty thousand pounds that's like 28 cars 
or 1,600 kindergartners. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> My truck weighs 1,600 second graders. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I mean, I, did somebody put them in I the I told truck? you, she overworked on these statistics to come up with this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like funny That's facts. an interesting comparative. All right, here's <laughs> another one. Okay, on a CB, if you're listening, I don't know how many people listen to CBs anymore. I suppose the truckers do, but us as just regular drivers don't. However, this is some CB talk. A driver tells you they're in a parking lot two miles ahead. There's a parking lot. Oh, I messed it up. A driver tells you there's a parking lot <laughs> two miles ahead. What does a parking lot mean? Do you know? Well, my first guess would have been uh, a parking lot, but uh, <laughs> it probably has something to do with cars sitting around or it's an obstruction of some yep, kind. a traffic jam. Boy, you're traffic good. Traffic jam, yeah. Yeah, there's a I traffic jam ahead. I, I used to have a CB. You did? Yeah. What was your call sign? We were not going to talk about that. We don't talk about a lot. You know, yeah, these questions I ask you. We're not going to se sexy rooster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we won't talk Shut about up. it. Let's go to the next one. Not that funny. Okay, you're driving a big rig down the road. Okay, big rig. When you hear somebody on the CB go, there's an alligator in the road. I know what that is. What is it? That, an alligator? Yeah. That is a uh, blown up tire. Like the, the belts good. that come off the tire. And there's a lot of them out there right now. Back to watching your tire pressure. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I've seen a lot of debris on the road, not just alligators. And it'll out tear there. your rig up if you run over one of those things. So a lot of people run their cars over and they just wipe out the undercarriage of the car. Well, let's switch over to just trucks for a moment because one in five people, 18% of the population here have trucks. What's really interesting is in Europe, only 1% have trucks. And I think it's because you are you have so much m many more people. And you know. They won't fit down the roads in Europe. Yeah, you too won't. Too narrow. That's true, too. <laughs> that's true. That in Boston. I mean, you see yeah. little tiny trucks, but they don't have to carry yeah. things like we do. We, we go long distances. We have lumber. We have all kinds of things we carry in our trucks, our dogs, you know, and our kids in the back. So only 1%. And 15% uh, use them for work. The rest of them just use them for every day. So we looked up, because the fifth wheels have to have a truck involved, we looked up the best trucks to tow a fifth wheel. And what's interesting, they're all 3,500s. You've got the Dodge Ram 3,500, Chevy Silverado 3,500 HD, the Ford F450 Super Duty, GMC Sierra 3,500 HD, and the Ford F-350 Super Duty. So those five are the best trucks to pull. Yeah, they're wheel. the biggest trucks you can pickups you can buy. Yeah, because if you look at the F-150, which those trucks were made years ago. What I back in 1946 they started. And they're actually the most popular vehicle of all time. Which is that again? The F. Oh, uh, the Ford, Ford F-150. F-150. Yeah. 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 And they're the best-selling vehicle in the United States. In the last 40 years, they've been the best-selling pickup truck. However, they can't pull that much. I mean, they can only pull 5,000 pounds. So there's no way you could have a fifth wheel no. attached to it. You just have to have a little camper I see, trailer. I actually see a lot of people doing that, though, and it's kind of dangerous. You know, when you're under or overgrossing your truck with too much weight on the back, I mean, you're just asking for trouble again, blowing the suspension and the, the tires. And the, it's out of balance. It, the truck doesn't weigh enough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you go up to the 250, you can pull 20,000 pounds. So it's a big, big, That's a big jump difference. up. Yeah. yeah. Big and difference. They can have 4,260 4, pounds as l payload capacity. And I believe that's in the back of the truck, too, right? Mm -hmm. So it can have an extra 4,200 pounds in the back of the truck. And yeah, the payload, yeah. And then pull 20,000 pounds. Right. Wow. That's a good truck. That's a good truck. <laughs> but the. 350, the F350 could pull 32,000 pounds and 7,600 pounds in the bed. That's good. That means it could carry you and I in your shoes. That's right. That's <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> the, uh, I'm just blown away that the F150 can only tow 5,000 and the 350 can tow 32,000 pounds. You know, I guess it's because it's 
high grade aluminum, right? The the little one would be just be lower grade materials. Well, just less of it. I mean, it's a smaller truck. It's just less. Yeah. And the suspension's lighter. You know, it doesn't weigh as much. Yeah. You know, I bet they're. I didn't look up the prices, but I bet the prices are quite different from the F one hundred and fifty to the three hundred and fifty. Yeah. But they'll figure out a way to charge you for it. <laughs> Especially now, if you can even get them. Yeah, I it's mean, hard. Here, come to Twin. If you want a truck, them. there's trucks everywhere for sale up here. We're, we're probably the truck capital area because everybody has a truck. Yeah, there's some nice ones here. I would say our statistics are way high, but the most dependable one they say is the GMC Sierra, one hundred and fifty. And the number one most reliable truck, what do you think that one is? Uh, the most reliable truck, I would say uh, GMC. Nope. It ends up being the one I had, the Toyota t- oh. Tundra. Most reliable doesn't necessarily mean it's the one with the least amount of dents. <laughs> <laughs> well, that probably, that does make sense. That's probably the best, toughest truck if it survived you. Yes, it yeah. did. Yeah. Barely. 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 Actually, I didn't have any big fender benders. Of course, it was in Kauai, and we only could go <laughs> very short distances. A lot of mud. A lot of mud, yep. That's what <laughs> I used it for. So that's what I have today. That's what we have today. Well, I'll yes. tell you what, you just took it right up to the end line. That's very good. You know, we, we're uh, interested in some of the things that you want to, us to know and uh, to find out for you and uh, some of the things you want to talk about. And one of the best ways to do that is going to be Contact us through our website or contact us through uh, email address or something like that. And, uh, you know, just communicate with us. Lisa was commenting the other day that she's not seeing a lot of comments on our YouTube channel. And that's either because we're boring you to death or... You haven't found us yet. You haven't found us yet or we're answering all your questions. And I don't think any of those are (laughs) what's happening. Well, I know you're really listening to us on the podcast. We have almost 700 downloads now, which is incredible. So the last two weeks, you guys have really bumped up on your podcast listening, not on the YouTube so much, which is okay. We're gaining a subscriber to a day, which is great. We'd love to get to 1,000 subscribers there so we can go live because we're going to go live this weekend anyway. We're going to record it live with some friends of ours out there camping. That's terrifying. have been camping for two years. <laughs> so that next week, you can look forward to all the things that they went through to get camping again. Yeah, that probably won't be on next Sunday because we'll be out there doing it next Sunday. But the week but after that, up. Yeah, yeah, it's coming up. And uh, a lot of fun. These people are very cool. You're going to like them. You're probably going to want them to do the podcast and get rid of us. Because they're funny. They're funny. (laughs) No way. They are very funny. (laughs) And uh, also, I suppose it's only fair uh, to let you off the hook today, but please do tell us. uh, We're sponsored by Musai Grantology. Yes, and just a brief uh, explanation of what that is and how you can help someone. Well, if you do not have a grant for your nonprofit, it may be time. We're coming up to the end of the second quarter, so it's a really good time to start planning for the third and fourth quarter and even into next year. So we're out there to help you and your mission to find funding with grants. So if we can help you, MusaiGrantology.com is our website. We'd love to help you. And also, we want to hear from you, so if you will let us know what you're up to, and if you also have something interesting going on as a trucker, a motorhomer, or an RVer, or anybody out there that's on the road, we want to hear from you and talk to you, and uh, have you share your experiences and stories with all of our listeners and viewers. So until next week, and we're going to be out on the road next week for sure, we are asking all of you to be safe, take care of yourself, and above all, keep your... Friskies biscuits. <laughs> that didn't quite work. No, it didn't. Keep your biscuit frisky. No, <laughs> it, right. it didn't. Be still. frisky. <laughs> Have a great day out there. Thank you so much for coming and watching and listening to us. Until next time. Bye bye. bye. bye.